Uh, okay, so uh, this is a quick look at the uh, Gerber highbrow knife. Uh, I'd say it's a kind of folding or flip knife. Uh, you could also argue it's kind of an assisted flip knife as it's got a bit of a spring mechanism. Uh, on the outside, to just show you the handly bit first, uh, it's, you can just about see it actually if I hold this up close. Uh, the handle end of things is a kind of anodized aluminium, uh, or as Americans would say, aluminum. Uh, which has got a slightly gnarled finish so that it's got quite a decent grip actually it's surprisingly grippy even when it's wet and then uh, this end of the blade is actually steel um, if you have a look at the finish up I don't know if you can see the finish super close the grain um, but um, it's basically it looks like it's PVD coated maybe just to give it a blackened finish um, there are some really, really great things about this knife that I really like, uh, and no matter what little gripes I have about it, I keep coming back to the fact that it's 40 bucks. So if I sound a little bit moany in the middle, it's because there's a couple of things that drive me crazy about this, but it's still only 40 bucks. It's really good for the price point. Um, the first thing uh, that I'll just have a little bit of a moan about is a silly thing really, but it comes in a, a cardboard box with a really uh, great big cable tie around it that's really, really difficult to get off. And I had to go find another sharp knife to free my knife from the packaging. So uh, that, it just put me in a bad mood when I started. Um, also, it actually arrived with a slightly small nick already in the aluminium, uh, or as you guys would say, aluminium. Uh, and I suspect this aluminium finish is gonna take a beating quite quickly and look quite Quite scratched up um, I that wouldn't bother me but it might bother uh, other people for finish and that kind of thing uh, on the back there's a clip uh, and I'm gonna stop my moaning nearly now uh, the clips great super strong but I absolutely loathe this little flip up bit at the end uh, I know it's to probably make things easier to put them on and off of belts um, but this little bit sticks out so much I mean I would just not have that final little flick up bit and make the whole thing way more comfortable it still sits okay in your hands though despite that but um, the clip's a bit weird. Um, and then the final, final, final gripe is it has a safety catch, uh, which is really weird. So it's a bit like a gun. Uh, so red is dead. Uh, if it's flipped back, it's ready to go. Um, it's designed so that it doesn't deploy in your pocket and keep things safe. But uh, I actually went for a bit of a run with it in my pocket and it accidentally flipped off to open in my pocket. The catch itself is so lightweight and weedy. Uh, it sounds it feels so cheap and thin. I just worry that it's gonna break quickly But I've given it I sat and watched TV for an hour and just kept playing with it see if I could break it and I didn't so uh, I think it's sturdier than it feels is basically uh, how I would describe it. So there you go That's my moaning out of the way, uh, but despite me moaning I, I just want to point out it's $40. So this is a really good value for money uh, So those are my little gripes out of the way uh, the business end of things, obviously once you pull back the strange safety catch, you have a kind of assisted flip lock, so you give it a bit of a pull uh, and out comes the blade. Uh, so it comes out really smoothly and it also locks off really securely. Uh, and then you can push this safety back forward again just to give it that extra security. Uh, the blade itself is, I measured it, it's just under four inches. So it'll be legal in pretty much every uh, state in the US. Uh, as a carry. Um, I actually opted for the serrated bit here uh, and the, uh, the, I would call this a PVD finish uh, on, on the blade as well. And I'll come back to why I opted for that. Uh, but yeah, that's the blade itself. Um, I'm not gonna get bogged down in this video about people that debate uh, on enormous threads on Reddit about the quality of different steels for knives. Um, anyone that actually uses knives a lot and who's out outdoors a lot doing lots of different things will tell you that there is no perfect steel for any blade uh, there's simply the least worst steel for what you want it for uh, if that sounds weird i'll give you an example uh, i have i think it's a 420 steel diver's knife uh, it might be uh, might be slightly different from that one but the point is that if i have a diver's knife and i'm in the sea a lot and it's likely to rust i'm going to want a steel that's incredibly resistant to corrosion and really its sharpness is of less importance to me whereas if i've got a camp craft knife or an everyday carry that i want to slice paper with i want something that's nice and super sharp and easy to sharpen and corrosion is going to be less of an issue so th there's always a trade off between hardness and flexibility corrosion and how well it holds sharpness 
and if you try and boost one of those physical traits of uh, the blade you're going to do that at the expense of another so I get a bit fed up with people moaning about that's not a good steel that is a good steel there is no perfect steel there's simply trade-offs and what this knife does unapologetically is it gives you a, a steel that is um, pretty good at holding an edge uh, but when it does blunt uh, it's really super easy to sharpen which is great it's pretty resistant to rust uh, and the PVD coating I think on the blade obviously massively helps with that uh, and it's pretty flexible and pretty strong and it's unlikely to shatter break or bend or have massive chips come off it so it's pretty strong as well so you know this is a reasonable blade for all the different attributes you're looking for and I think you can't really ask for more than that for a $40 blade there are people that are going to moan about Chinese steel I think this is known as 7CR uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable uh, if you want to get patriotic and buy other types of steel that's okay with you but I would point out that the US is the largest importer of steel and China is the largest exporter of steel so you figure out how much Chinese steel there really is uh, on er literally everything that we use. Personally um, I think it's more than just the composition of the steel and where it's made it's the way it's heat treated uh, and all that kind of thing and if I'm honest I have a wide range of knives and I have some that, that have Chinese steel in them that are far superior to anything I've had elsewhere so it, it, it's it's a debate people will keep having and that I won't get involved in. My answer is there is no perfect steel. There's simply the least worst steel for what you want it for. Um, so that pretty much rounds it up. If you look on the back, they put a little hole in the back here for the, a lanyard to attach, which is kind of nice. Size-wise, it's quite big for an everyday carry. Um, I would say it's bordering on a kind of plucky little camp knife as well. Um, the, the, bla uh, the handle itself is quite large, but it sits nicely in your hand. Um, and I actually quite like the serrated bit here. You'll know what I mean when you're cutting through boxes and sometimes you still just get kind of gnarled up and I like to be able to switch to the I've run out of patience section of the blade. Um, but also for minor camp craft, you could probably use this to cut up shorter stuff for kindling and that kind of thing. So this is, for me, this is kind of an EDC everyday carry and camp craft crossover. Um, they say, uh, Gerber say that with the you should be able to flip it back one-handed uh, it's just about doable but the strength of the spring makes it a bit clunky but you can see I can just pretty much do that uh, so that's it uh, I think that's everything uh, if I've had a bit of a moan about some bits they're minor um, I keep coming back to the fact that no matter how much you gripe about the minor bits it's 40 bucks uh, it's a lot of bang for your buck this um, it's a good knife for 40 dollars doesn't matter how you cut it I challenge anyone to find something better at that price point so there you go uh, this is the, the Gerber, uh, it's the Highbrow. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and like. It's super, super helpful for me. I review loads of gear and as you can imagine, uh, it takes up quite a lot of my time. So it's always helpful if people can support it. Uh, and I'll put a full uh, blog written review in the description on the video uh, and a link to buying it as well for the lowest price. So there you go.